Hey kids, welcome to the last lesson in module three. Hooray! And then we're gonna be starting module four next time. So lesson 16 in module three has the objective as written at the bottom, explore part to whole relationships. Can you read that? Because it's microscopic. Yeah, I can barely read it too. So anyway, what we are doing today is a no notes day. So hooray, you don't have to take any notes. <clears throat> but you do have to turn that brain on because you're going to be thinking about the words in these statements and how they relate to each other. So we're going to be drawing ribbons. Ribbons look a whole lot like tape diagrams, but let's call them ribbons because that sounds nicer. And um, when finished, if you have somebody nearby who is also reading the same statement, whether you're in class or at home, when finished, compare your work to your partners. Because honestly, seeing the difference between how people interpret these statements is where the fun begins and where the learning begins as well. Uh, because if you make mistakes or if you have something different, you really have to justify your thinking about why you drew your ribbon the way that you drew it. So let's get started. One, this is one ribbon. In A, one ribbon. We're going we're gonna to be looking at ribbons. Look, this is a ribbon too, but they're going to have different uh, explanations that go with. So the piece shown below is only one third of the whole. This is one third of the whole. So complete the drawing to show the whole ribbon. So if this is one out of three parts, then what I need to do is I need to draw more parts that look just like that. If this is one, then here's another one, and here is another one. So complete the drawing to show the whole ribbon. Now I have a whole ribbon. Three thirds equals one. Okay, so that's what we're doing today. We're gonna look, we're gonna read, identify. What are the important words? Is is an important word. Whole is an important word. The fraction is important. This is a piece, that's important. Let's compare that with B. Okay, we've got one ribbon. The piece shown below is four fifths of the whole. Difference between A and B. This piece is one. This piece is four. So it's four fifths of the whole. The whole is gonna be five fifths, but this is four. So what you're gonna do instead of drawing more of these is you're going to split this or divide it into four equal parts and then add on a fifth section that would then make five fifths for the whole. This is four fifths, remember one fifth, one fifth, one fifth, one fifth, and you add those and you get your four fifths. This is also a fifth. And so you add that on to get the one, the five fifths, which is one. So you complete the drawing, okay? Next one. Instead of one ribbon, we have two ribbons. Ribbons A and B. A and B, so we'll put them right on top of each other. One third of A is equal to all of B. Draw a picture of the ribbons. Okay, so if one third of A is equal to all of B, then let's just say B is about this long, okay, but a's ribbon, this is only going to be one third. One third of A is equal to all of B. So you have to continue drawing the rest of ribbon A in order to show the whole ribbon. This is the whole for B, and this is the whole for A. Okay? So if you only have one ribbon and it's not divided into three parts, then make sure that it's at least three times as long as B. Okay, let's do another one. For D, we have three ribbons now, C, D, and E. C, D, and E, set it up like this. 
and check out what we're going to do. We're going to have comparative words here. C is half the length of D. E is twice as long as D. So we're comparing with D on both C and E. Draw a picture of the ribbons. And it doesn't give us any particular size, so let's make D about this big. Okay, it, don't make it too big because we have to cut things in half and double things. So if D, sorry, if C is half the length of D, and I've got D set up, then about halfway is the size that C would be. And E is going to be twice as long as D. So if this is my D, then I want double that for E. Okay? So if this is the 1, this is half, and this is twice. Those are the key words that go with these ribbons slash tape diagrams. Okay, hope that's helpful. This is hopefully going to be a quick one. The, we only have two more, so continue your part to whole relationships with these strategies. Half of Robert's piece of wire is equal to two thirds of Maria's wire. Ooh, we've got a half and we've got equal to two thirds of Maria's wire. The total length of their wires is 10 feet. We'll get to that in a minute. How much longer is Robert's wire than Maria's? So we've got Robert and Maria, R and M, set it up and label. And we've got half of Robert's piece is equal to two out of three of Maria's. So let's, let's draw a ribbon. Let's, let's say we have half right here. Okay, this is Robert's ribbon, the whole thing, but half of his piece is equal to two out of three pieces of Maria's. Half of his is equal to two out of three. And so right here, you should be able to draw a straight line and show how they are the same at that point, okay? Now, remember, they still have a hole. He still has a whole uh, wire, and she still has a whole wire. The total length of these wires is 10 feet. Now, here's where it gets a little odd. The, we don't have to solve exactly. We just have to show in a fraction or a mixed number. How much longer is Robert's wire than Maria's? So when I first started doing this program, it was... Um, confusing to me because I was like, well, I don't understand what they want us to do. I don't have very much information. But here's what I want you to notice. Once you have created this picture, notice how I'm filling in all these little pieces so that they are equal in size. That is going to be key when you're solving these questions is to create the tape diagrams and make equal size pieces because that is honestly finding the missing number. So now I have uh, 10 feet that's being divided by these seven pieces. 10 divided by seven. 10 divided by seven. 10 feet divided by seven pieces. So when you have 10 divided by seven, all we have to do at this point, according to this Eureka Math program, is to uh, write this, which is actually the answer, in its simplest form. So 7 fits into 10 one whole time, so it would be like 7 sevenths, that's your one whole, with 3 left over out of 7, and that's going to be the 1 and 3 sevenths feet, and that's how much uh, longer Robert's wire is than Maria's, and so that would be like this space here. So if all these add up to 10 feet, then this amount is one and three sevenths. Okay? So I know it seems really weird, but that's the answer. And let's wrap it up with number three. 
half of Sarah's wire is equal to two-fifths of Daniel's. Again, we're looking at these words, and it's equal to, and two out of five of Daniel's. And now we have Chris. We have a third wire. He has three times as much as Sarah. In all, their wire measures six feet. So again, we're going to have that label up here off to the side with the total amount. So let's draw our pictures. Let's give them their names. We've got Sarah, we've got Daniel, and we've got Chris. So half of Sarah's wire is equal to two-fifths of Daniel's. Let's look at Sarah's wire. Let's give her wire a size. Let's do half of her wire, and that's equal to two. That might be too small. Hopefully it's not. E half of hers is equal to two out of five for Daniel. So he not only has two more here, but he has another one off to the side. Okay, half of her wire is the same distance as two, if that's crooked, sorry, I'll just make it exactly straight, two out of five of Daniel's, okay? Now here comes Chris. Chris has three times as much as Sarah. Hmm. Well, we know that for Chris to have three times as much as Sarah, it's going to be equal to four of Daniel's. So if this is one for Chris, then he's going to have another one and another one. Okay, so it's three times as much as Sarah. Here's Sarah's one and here's Chris's one. One, two, three, three times one is three. In all, their wire measures six feet. Six feet. Now, I want you to look at what you just created and do the same thing we did up above because this is going to be critical in helping you solve. What have we done with Daniel's wire? Well, we broke it into exactly these little pieces. So now take these and compare with Sarah's. Split this one and split this one so that we have equal sized pieces. Now do it again, noting that each one that is Sarah's is broken into four equal pieces. Do it again here, each one being four equal pieces, each one being four equal pieces. Okay, now how long is Sarah's wire and feet? How could I possibly answer this question? Well, what you have created by making these individual pieces is the number of pieces that six can be divided into. And that's the missing information in order to solve this. So it's very important that you get really good at creating equal size pieces in unequal size wires or whatever they give you, okay? So when you count how many total pieces, we're gonna divide six by that. I've got my six feet and I need to divide that by all these pieces, so how many are there? So you can take a look at all the fours and go 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 21. So it's six feet of wire broken into 21 pieces. And remember that that's just going to turn it into six divided by 21. Okay? So in order to... Um, to get the how long is Sarah's wire and feet because I have four of these, then I have six twenty-firsts four times. I sure hope these videos are helpful. Click subscribe and come back again. And we'll have some more fun with math. So if each individual one of these is six twenty-firsts, and you put them together, you will get 24 21sts for Sarah's wire. Now, how long is that? That is all of 21 21s, so that would be one, with three left over, which gives you one and three 21sts. Now, that in itself is not simplest form. And some students maybe aren't there yet because they look at this and go, I don't understand how to simplify this. And, you know, rule, Mrs. Sednes's rule one is the doubles, and this is not a double. And rule two is look for even numbers, and this is not rule two because they're both odd. This is when you have to know your multiples and go to rule three, and you find the greatest common factor for both. 
Three is the greatest common factor for both, so you would simplify by dividing by three on both top and bottom, and you end up with one and one-seventh feet, and that is the length of Sarah's wire. S-A-R-A-H apostrophe S wire. There you go. I sure hope that was helpful. That is a tough one on the back here, but definitely fun on the front. So come back again, and we will see you on the next video. Bye for now. We'll see you in Module 4. Yes.